Hi guys, welcome back to part four of pivot tables. In this video, I'm going to create pivot charts, which are driven from my pivot table. They're going to be dynamic charts, which change as I change my pivot table. So in the previous video, we looked at slicers, and these are the remnants of my slicers. I'm going to get rid of these, simply clicking on them and hitting delete. I'm going to zoom out a bit, and I'm going to remind you that I'm working with a pivot table. When I click on the pivot table, remember I get the pivot table tools and the fields list here. Okay, what I'm looking at here is a very basic pivot table, which you can tell has transmission in the columns, automatic and manual are the categories, and make or manufacture in the rows, and it has five categories. And then the calculated fields are the price, so these were used cars. These were the prices of the used cars, and actually the calculation is average. Okay, that I manually changed this to average. By default, it's sum. Okay, so what if I wanted to actually visualize, make this a little more visual by adding a chart? So I can make what's called a pivot chart. It's simply a chart that's driven from off of a pivot table. So I click on the pivot tools, I go to analyze, and then I see on the right here, I have pivot chart. So let's click there. And it's almost like choosing a regular chart, creating a regular chart. I'm gonna click. Uh, let's just pick a clustered column chart. So I get a clustered column chart with what seems like some extra things that I haven't seen if I just made regular charts before. Okay, so let's just take a look. Let's forget about those for a second. Let's take a look at what chart, uh, what this chart's about. So we have the manufacturers on the rows and the average price on the columns so it puts the calculated field in the column it puts the columns sorry the rows in the rows and then it creates a because it's a clustered column chart it creates a different bar within each cluster so Honda is a cluster for automatic and for manual and here we have a legend for transmission so our column field for our pivot table becomes our legend field in our chart. If we don't like that, we could change that. But right off the bat, this to me is a lot better, a lot better way to communicate than this. And this was a huge improvement on just looking at my original data set, which I can, I can get very little value off of as is until I started analyzing it with a pivot table. Okay, now let's play around with the pivot chart and see uh, how it works dynamically. So first off, I get little choices here. I can actually filter. Just like I could filter in a pivot table, I could filter the pivot chart. So I can look at just Hondas, for example, or Hondas and Toyotas. Okay, so that's great. So very interactive, very dashboardy. I can sort uh, from, you know, in any which way I can, you can desire. I can look at a particular transmission, so I could filter and just look at automatic cars or just manual cars or both. So we'll leave it on both. And then for the average, I can change this average field here to let's say sum, and this would reflect the sum of the sales instead of the average. So I don't think sum is that informative for me, so I'm gonna leave it as average. Okay, now let's play around with our pivot table and see how the chart updates as we play around with our uh, fields list here. So I click on my pivot table, and let's say uh, I wanna bring color into this. So if I throw color into filters, you're not going to see any change, except that I could now choose particular colors and see the charts reflect that. Uh, if I want the actual chart to look, to incorporate color, uh, I can throw it into, let's see what would make sense. This might get a little messy. Yeah. 
there's a lot of colors so yeah so color might not be the best choice here let's choose uh, transmission and make in the legend in the in the and then color so you could play around with this until you get what you desire sometimes what you desire might be just too much so you got to kind of uh, realize that you, if you're trying to pack too much information into one shot uh, into one chart or one table you might have to pay the price of it not being too um, kind of clear so people might just look over it okay uh, let's see sales date we can throw that into our make and again we see it gets very messy because the remaining fields here have a lot of um, categories so even year it was like 13 years model not sure is there only there's only a couple models so that's not really interesting um, so we're going to kind of just leave this as is i can show you what if you wanted to change this to another type of chart you get pivot chart tools up here so pivot chart tools i can go to design and i can change colors i can do quick layout and i could hover over these and get different kind of presets i can choose a different formatting preset i can switch rows and columns which is essentially just flipping these two guys right so this might be the view you're going for this I think is still intelligible whereas what I was doing before trying to pack in that color information was simply I think a little too much um, let's flip them back I can change the chart type completely uh, line chart if that's appropriate here uh, I don't I think this is a much better choice uh, we can go with the bar chart the, the horizontal column chart basically bar chart um, etc so you can play around with these uh, okay or leave it as a clustered okay and so, so basically that's what a pivot chart is it's a chart that's driven off of a pivot table so change things in your pivot table and they're going to update in your pivot chart that includes slicing filtering and also moving around the fields in these four quadrants okay so hope this was helpful this is one extra extension of a pivot table you can make a chart from it okay so continue watching in the next video i'm going to show you how to make calculated fields in a pivot table okay till next time subscribe comment share like until next time have a great day